This week we'll be going over all of the achievements in Fallout New Vegas. There are 75 achievements in the game with an average completion time of around 180 hours. You can definitely grind it out a little bit quicker than this though, especially with a guide like this. I would recommend going ahead and doing a playthrough or two just on your own without any guides. And now, let's get into it. In order to get all of the achievements in New Vegas, you will unfortunately, or I guess fortunately, have to do multiple playthroughs. Or at least have a save later on before a major decision so that you can then reload and replay the later half of the game for different factions and choices. So starting out, we'll go through the main story missions that you'll have to get through up until that point, so that we can then make our primary save that we'll be going back to multiple times. I'll also have mostly new footage in 4K that I'm using for the video, but there will be some old clips mixed in from when I 100%ed the game on stream a few years ago. We played through on a much harder difficulty back then to make it more interesting, and if you want to know when we start stream back up, make sure you follow me over on Twitch, the link is in the description. To start the game, you'll wake up with Dr. Mitchell and can get Ain't That a Kick in the Head for completing the mission by the same name. This is the mission for going through the character creation steps with the Doctor to put your mind back together after having it blown out of your head. For the first run through, we're also going to be doing it in hardcore mode for the hardcore achievement which you'll get when you play through the game from start to finish in hardcore mode. That means you'll need to activate it when asked as you leave Doc Mitchell's house and never turn it off until after you finish the game this first time. Hardcore will make things a lot more difficult, but you can still play on very easy difficulty if you want to make completing the game a lot easier. The next main quest achievement will be They Went That Away for completing that mission. It's a pretty long one as you'll be tracing the steps of your almost murderer throughout the Mojave. You'll head over to Brim, then to Nipton, nothing really to see here. Then we'll go over to Novak and find out where our last stop will be over in Boulder City. This leads us into Ring-a-Ding-Ding, -ding, again for completing the mission by that name. This one will be for following the clues we gathered in the last main quest to find Benny and confront him. There are plenty of options for how this confrontation can go, but for a side note on an upcoming achievement, Combat Veteran, you may want to try to convince Benny to meet you up top in the room, pickpocket his gun Maria from him, and then kill him with it for one of those challenges. Now at this point, we get to where we have to start thinking about what faction we're doing for this playthrough, so you'll definitely want to make sure you don't do any major choices going for or against the NCR, the Legion, Mr. House, or Yes Man. We want to keep all of those options open for now as we clean up some of the random achievements before making our main save that we're going to load back to. There are plenty of random achievements in the game that we're going to go through, and the next group will be companion-related achievements. We have Old Buddy Old Pal for recruiting any of the companions in the game, and the earliest slash easiest one to do is with EDE over in Prim. EDE is an iBot that's sitting on the counter in Nash's house in Prim, but if you can repair it with one of the available options, you'll gain it as a follower. Then speaking of recruiting followers, we also have the whole gangs here for recruiting all of the companions in the game in a single playthrough. There are 8 followers throughout the game and they all have their own special ways you have to recruit them or conditions that must be met or they'll stop following you. Because of that, I made a separate video going over every one of them which you can check out from my New Vegas playlist linked in the description. There also is apparently a bug where you can sometimes get this for hiring 8 companions in total spread across different playthroughs instead of having to do it by recruiting all of the different ones in a single playthrough. Then there are a few achievements related to leveling up. We have New Kid for reaching level 10, Up and Comer for reaching level 20, and The Boss for reaching level 30. You can get these naturally as you play through everything, so don't worry too much about trying to grind levels out as you have to do a lot of killing and missions in order to 100% the game, which will get you there pretty easily. Next up is Crafty for crafting 20 items. This can be easily done at any of the crafting tables in the game, especially if you do something like recycling ammo or something like that where you're technically crafting 20 items at a time anyway. Yes, that counts, so they probably should have made this number a little bit higher, but oh well, it just makes it an easy one to get. Then we have Jury Rigger for repairing 30 items. As you go through the wasteland, you'll have Armor Break, Weapons Break, or at least have them lower in durability, reducing their effectiveness. You can repair them for the achievement by finding another one of the same type and using the repair option in your Pip-Boy to combine those items and raise its durability. 
For weapons, you also have the option of using weapon repair kits that can be used on your equipped weapon to count towards this. If an item is past this marker here, then it actually changes to maintain instead of repair. So while you're trying to get this, make sure you're at least letting them drop below that line before repairing. No Tumbler Fumbler is for picking 25 locks. This one you'll likely get naturally, but you'll definitely want to be raising up your lockpick skill a decent amount so you'll be able to actually attempt to unlock harder difficulty locks as you play through the game. Then after 25 locks are open from that, you'll get the achievement. Another very important skill you'll want to level up a lot is speech. This is going to help you get outstanding orator for making 50 speech challenges. While going through dialogue options with different characters, you'll occasionally have opportunities to pass speech checks and get bonuses or alternate routes to complete portions of missions. This is a huge skill that honestly might be a little bit OP, but you'll want to raise your skill level a lot in that to make sure you can pass these challenges when they're presented to you. Then Hack the Mojave is for hacking 25 terminals. This one is tied to the science skill, and yes, you guessed it, you should level this one up quite a bit as well, as it's a pretty important one to open up many paths throughout the game. The hacking minigame is also one of the more fleshed out minigames, which makes it actually kind of interesting to do. Starting out, you're gonna have four attempts at the password before you'll be locked out, and when you make a guess at a word, it'll tell you how many letters were correct. You can then use that information to compare the other available words to it to find out if it could possibly work. There's also a second part of this minigame that people don't always find out about. Hidden in the other symbols, you're going to find these sections with open brackets where it'll highlight a large section of other symbols. If you enter this in, it won't count as a guess, but will either reset your amount of available guesses back to four, or it'll remove one of the incorrect words from the list. Next will be Mod Master for installing 20 weapon mods. This one can take a little bit to get done, as you don't generally find a lot of mods naturally and end up having to buy them to finish this up. Essentially, you just find or buy these mods for weapons you have, go into the modding menu, and install them on the weapon. You can buy them from vendors to finish this out, especially the Gunrunner's Arsenal as they have all kinds of options for this and other related achievements. Artful Pocketer is going to be for picking 50 pockets during your playthrough. This one is one of the rarer achievements because, well... Who actually pickpockets in this game? So you can just go around grinding this out on random NPCs as you go, or one decent option is to go to Vault 21 on the strip and pickpocket Sarah in the lobby. She has this special crunchy mute fruit in her pocket that you can pickpocket an infinite amount of times which makes it to where you can grind all of these out on her. Next up we have a lot of different achievements related to doing 10,000 damage with different types of weapons. We have Lead Dealer for causing 10,000 damage with guns, which will be your standard guns with conventional ammo. Blast Mastery for causing 10,000 damage with energy weapons, which includes things like laser rifles, plasma rifles, and things like that. Curios and Relics for causing 10,000 damage with unique Mojave Wasteland weapons, which will be the named weapon variants like that gun and things like that. Master of the Arsenal for causing 10,000 damage with Gunrunner's Arsenal weapons, which will be all of the weapons that have the GRA tag next to them that you can pick up over at the GRA store. New Vegas Samurai for causing 10,000 damage with melee weapons, which counts any melee weapons you use other than the ones that are like power fists, brass knuckles, or something like that, because those are going to count for Old Time Brawler for causing 10,000 damage with unarmed weapons. And finally we have the last one, Love the Bomb, for causing 10,000 damage with explosives, which will be grenades, mines, grenade launchers, and things like that. Then there's You Run Barter Town for selling 10,000 caps worth of goods, which you'll get eventually, especially if you loot a lot of the items at locations as you're clearing them. And my looting rule that I usually go by is, as long as the value is 5 times or over the weight, then I'll pick it up to sell. Next, we can go over to the Location Discovery related achievements, which will be Walker of the Mojave for discovering 50 locations, and Master of the Mojave for discovering 125 locations on the map. You can either just wander around and walk up to every location that pops up on your compass to get these, or there's a perk that shows you every location on the map that you can use to go through and grind this out. No when to fold them is for winning 3 games of Caravan, which is surprisingly rare for how easy it is to do. This is really because a lot of people don't end up learning how to play the game, but it's pretty simple to figure out. And related to this is also Caravan Master for winning 30 games of Caravan, and in order to help show everyone how easy this is to do, 
I made a standalone video going over the details of how you play Caravan as well as my general strategy on winning matches to help you get these wins and make some caps. Somewhat related to Caravan, we have a few achievements related to gambling. First is Double Down for playing 10 hands of blackjack, which you can do at any of the blackjack tables at one of the casinos and just play some hands until you get the achievement. Then there's One-Armed Bandit for playing 10 spins of slots, which is just like the last one, you'll go to one of the casinos and spin slots until this one pops. Little Wheel will be for playing 10 spins of roulette, and just like the last couple, it's just for playing that game at one of the casinos until it pops. And then the last of those is going to be The Courier Who Broke the Bank for getting banned from all of the Strips casinos. That's going to be the Ultra Lux, the Tops, and Gamora. You'll need to win certain amounts of chips from each of those casinos in order to actually have them ban you, that being 15,000 at the Ultralux, 10,000 at the Tops, and 9,000 at Gamora. The way to make this a little bit easier is to raise your Lux stat as high as possible by choosing to have it high at the beginning of the game, wearing Naughty Nightwear for Mick and Ralph's, and getting Luck Implants to make this a lot easier to do. Then Desert Survivalist is for healing 10,000 points of damage with food. This one you'll definitely want to be working on during your hardcore playthrough because you'll probably be needing food to heal during that. Plus, stim packs just aren't as good in hardcore mode, so it's probably better to try to go through food first anyway when doing that run. Of course, then we also have the other healing achievement, which is Stimply Amazing for healing 10,000 points of damage with stim packs. This one's pretty self-explanatory and is usually what people default to when trying to heal. A few of the other achievements you'll want to keep in mind are the Gunrunner's Arsenal Challenge achievements. For all of these, you're going to want to get far into the game, make a save, then go through and do these challenges, then reload so you don't mess up any of the other achievements. The first one up to the challenge is the easiest, where you just have to complete three of the one-star GRA challenges, which can be any three of the following. First, we have Benefit or a Hazard for killing 15 robots with a 5.56mm pistol, which you can do at many places, but for the purpose of doing this achievement, you're gonna want to make sure that you take a trip over to the Lucky 38 to do this with the Securitrons, because you can then also get a Slave Obeys for going down into Mr. House's chamber and kill him with a 9-iron or Nephi's Golf Driver. Then there's Overkill for killing 20 animals with a Fat Man or Fat Mines. These have to be the regular, non-mutated animals, so it'll likely be a lot of regular dogs from the different factions. That one's a little bit harder to do, so I'd just skip that one. Then there's the same could be said of all religious weapons for killing 15 feral ghouls with Maria, Jehenna, or Holy Frag Grenades. The easiest one of these will likely just be Maria, because you can grab that from Benny pretty early on. Next is You Don't Belong in This World for killing 10 abominations with katanas, dynamite, machetes, throwing spears, throwing knives, and throwing hatchets. A pretty good spot to get this one done would be over at Vault 22 as the Spore Carriers count as abominations, so you can get plenty of those over there. And finally, the last challenge that you can do for this achievement is Nee 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 for crippling 5 right arms with shotguns. This one isn't too terribly hard to do, so you can probably get this one done fairly easy as long as you just use VATS to target that limb. Now we have Combat Veteran for completing any three of the 2 star Gunrunners challenges which is a bit harder, but still not too hard to do. I made a standalone video for that one to go over which ones I'd recommend and how you can get those done. Then for the last of these, we have pros only for completing three of the three star challenges. This is the toughest one and the rarest achievement on Steam. And of course, I made a standalone video for this one as well to go over the challenges and which ones I'd recommend going for. Next up is Globetrotter for finding all of the snow globes in the base game. There's seven of these in various locations, and none are actually missable. This is another one that I made a separate guide for, so you know the drill. Once you're ready to go after this one, be sure to use that guide. Now we'll start going through the random side quest achievements that we can go ahead and knock out before starting to go through finishing up each of our faction endings. The first of these will be Come Fly With Me for completing the quest by the same name. This one you'll likely end up doing already while you're going through the early main quests, as you go to the rep contest site to get rid of the ghouls. You can find a group that aren't actually feral, and you'll have to help them make the great journey to... well, somewhere. Possibly just to blow up, whether you do that on purpose or not. Then we have that lucky old son for completing that quest. 
This one is one that you'll need to do over at Helios 1, which is controlled by the NCR. You'll basically just need to help Fantastic get the power up and running and routed to wherever you're wanting. You also have some more nefarious choices you could make during that, if you want. Next is GI Blues for completing that quest. This one is over in Freeside helping the kings with some issues that they're having in Freeside. This is just a lot of talking back and forth with possibly a small amount of fighting. This is one that you'll definitely need to have done before going through any of the faction endings as they're one of the factions they'll want you to either work with or decide what to do with them. Volaire is for completing that mission and this is one you'll also need to do to get this faction, the Boomers, to work with you for the faction endings. You'll head out to the Nellis Air Force Base and dodge some bombs in order to get up there. You'll then have to do a few side quests for them to get your relation up with them, and that'll be the end of Valair once their leader trusts you enough. Then return to Senders for completing that side quest. This is one you'll have to do for the NCR, where you'll basically be asked to go to all of the different ranger stations scattered across the Mojave. There are some twists throughout, but eventually you'll get all of those taken care of and decide what you want to do with the info you find before turning the quest in to complete it. Next is Talent Pool for completing that quest. For this one, you'll start at the tops and help Tommy Torini get some new acts together for the aces. You'll then go find a few people to hire, and once you get all of them there, you can return to Tommy to get paid and get this achievement. Legend of the Star is another one for the side quest by the same name. This one is pretty interesting as you have to find these Blue Star Sunset Sarsaparilla bottle caps during your travels. You'll need to make a stop by the Sunset Sarsaparilla headquarters so you can talk to Festus, the animatronic robot who will tell you that you need to find 50 of these caps for a prize. So I'll pull up a list here of the different locations where you can find them. I would keep an eye out for them as you travel and then go back through to clean this one up pretty late during your playthrough by using this list. Now, if you do want an alternate way to get some of these caps, you can actually end up finding some by drinking Sunset Sarsaparilla every once in a while. It's not very likely, but it does happen sometimes. So once you have these 50, you can turn them into Festus to get your prize. Yes, yeah, so there isn't actually a prize there, and you fail the quest. But you can then complete a valuable lesson in that very same building, which will pop the achievement. Now we can finally run through all of the different faction ending achievements. We have a few routes to go through, Yes Man, Mr. House, The Legion, and the NCR. You can do these in any order you want, as we'll just be reverting back to our save that we make before making a choice on which way to go. So first, we're going to go the route of Yes Man. You can get Wildcard for completing his main quest line, and that has many parts to it. You'll just go through that line making choices on what to do with the different factions, and since we went through doing all of the side quests first, that takes care of some of these parts already. In the middle of this quest line, you'll also get You'll Know It When It Happens for completing that quest as long as you still have decent relations with the NCR. This is one you'll also be asked to do during your Mr. House and NCR playthroughs, so during any of those, you'll get this. It's basically going to be, you go talk to the NCR leaders, and you'll be tasked with going to the speech that President Kimball will be giving, and just make sure that he doesn't get assassinated. Once all of that's done, we can continue down Yes Man's quest line to get No Gods, No Masters for completing that final quest. This is Yes Man's quest for going to the fight at the Hoover Dam and winning with his side. There are going to be achievements for completing this mission with each side that will essentially all be the same thing, but just with fighting from different angles and with a different conclusion once it's all said and done. So then we'll reload that main save we made before going down Yes Man's quest line and we'll go down Mr. House's. We'll be able to get The House Always Wins for completing that quest line, and that's gonna have many parts and is essentially the same thing as Wildcard, but from Mr. House's perspective. And then finally, for his ending quest, we have All or Nothing for ending the game with Mr. House. And just like with the other ending quest, you'll go to the fight at the Hoover Dam and fight your way across until Mr. House finally wins. And then we'll reload our main save to go do Caesar's Legion, and do his quest line until we can get Arizona Killer for completing that mission. This is essentially the other side of You'll Know It When It Happens, where you're tasked with showing up there and assassinating President Kimball. Then we'll get Render Unto Caesar for completing that mission, which is cleaning up more of the things for Caesar. And after that, you'll get to work on Veni Vidi Vici for completing that quest, which is the ending quest for Caesar. 
This is basically the opposite of the other endings where you fight your way from Caesar's side over to the NCR to defeat them. Now we'll reload that main save again and do our last faction run with the NCR. The next achievement we'll get through this line is For the Republic, where we'll go through most of the NCR quests, setting things up with the different factions like we did for all of the other main playthroughs. Then, once that's done, we can move on to Eureka, which is, you guessed it, the final mission with the NCR where we fight at the Hoover Dam and win the fight for the NCR. If you made it this far in the video, comment down below to let me know, make sure you subscribe, like the video, and if you want to support the channel even further, make sure you hit the join button and become a member. Now that's the end of the base game achievements, plus Gunrunner's Arsenal, and from this point on we'll be going through all of the ones added by the four main DLCs. First up we'll go through Honest Hearts, which is one of the simpler and shorter DLC. For When We Remembered Zion, you'll need to arrive at Zion by heading up to the Northern Passage, and go through the process of getting ready to go on the journey with Jed Masterson. Once you do that and sit through the introduction cutscene, you'll get this achievement. Over in Zion, we'll get stuck there and our caravan pals will all get slaughtered so we then have to work with Joshua Graham, the Burning Man, to help him and the natives. To get Restore Our Fortunes, you'll need to resupply Daniel and the Sorrows. This is the first portion of main quest for the DLC that Joshua gives you where you grab supplies from various places and take them all over to Daniel. Then for In a Foreign Land, you'll need to scout the Zion Valley for signs of the White Legs. This is the second portion of quest Daniel gives you to prepare for the end of the DLC. Then once that's done, you need to make a save before choosing how to handle the third act of the DLC. We can either fight the White Legs, or just run. We'll start with May My Hand Forget Its Skill for Evacuating Zion. This is going to be the option that Daniel wants you to go with, where you just run from the White Legs. Then once you get to the end of that, we'll have to reload our save to back before we made that choice. We can then go ahead and get O Daughter of Babylon for siding with Joshua Graham and crushing the White Legs. This means you'll take the fight to them and at the end, execute the remaining members to end this quest. We warned you at Syracuse. Now with Honest Hearts done, we'll move on to the Dead Money DLC to make a trip over to the Sierra Madre. First, we'll need to work on getting Sierra Souvenir Aficionado for collecting 500 Sierra Madre chips. To do this, you'll really just need to keep an eye out for them as you're running around and loot all of them that you can. You don't have to have them all at one time to get this, so feel free to exchange them for other items. You can also gamble for them once you get into the actual Sierra Madre later on in the DLC to make this even easier. Then for the actual quests of the DLC, our first achievement will be Assemble Your Crew for recruiting Dean, Christine, and Dog. To do this, you're going to need to complete the quests Find Caller 8, Dog, Find Caller 12, Christine, and Find Caller 14, Dean. Once you get all of them, you'll have this achievement pop. Next will be Having a Ball for completing the Sierra Madre Gala event. You'll be tasked with starting the Gala event, and then about halfway through the quest Trigger the Gala event, you'll have this one trigger, and unlock. Now once we get to the Sierra Madre basement, you'll once again want to make a save so that we can reload to make different choices for the next two achievements. First, we'll get cash out for confronting Father Elijah in the Sierra Madre vault. This is the easy one to do, which is basically just go through the vault, access the terminal, but don't go through all of the files as that's going to trap you in the vault, and then convince Elijah to come down to the vault by either having 75 in explosives, science, or repair. Once he gets down there, you'll need to fight him and kill him. A little side note, you can use the terminal to turn the turrets to shoot at him, but make sure that you get the final blow or the achievement won't actually unlock. Then for the last one of this DLC, we'll reload our save and work on safety deposit box for trapping Father Elijah in the vault. This one is much harder to do, as you'll need to convince Father Elijah to come down to the vault, but this time, instead of fighting him, you're gonna need to run back the way we came, so you can get out of the vault without Father Elijah detecting you. If he detects you, it'll bring down blue barriers that trap you in there and stop you from getting this ending. Now with all of that done, we can move on to Old World Blues for the next DLC. The long one we'll be working on throughout the DLC is making friends for reactivating all 10 of the Sync's robotic assistants. This one takes a while to get through, but luckily there is a quest tied to it, so it's not too hard, just a bit time-consuming. 
So once you get into the DLC and start it, you can talk to all of the robots in the think tank to start all of their quests. The side quest line, all my friends have off switches, will be the one that you need to keep working on throughout this playthrough to get all of the sync robotic assistance. Then we have Spinal Tapped for recovering the X8 Vertebrae Pulse Desensitizer Frequency, which is tied to one of the main quests that you have to get through by the same X8 code. Cardiac Arrest is for searching your feelings, for your heart, which is essentially the same as the last achievement but for completing the X13 main quest for going through the Stealth Suit Research Facility and picking that up. Then we have Make Up Your Mind for making up your mind about your brain. This one you'll get near the end of the DLC when you finally deal with the giant Robo-Scorpion X42. After it's defeated, you'll be reunited with your brain and get this achievement. Then finally at that point, we'll get our last achievement outsmarted for completing Old World Blues. You'll get this one quickly after the last once you return to the think tank and complete the last quest in whichever way you'd like. And then we can go to the last DLC, Lonesome Road. This DLC is a bit more collectible focused when it comes to achievements and is a longer one. First, we'll get ed acated for finding all of EDE's upgrades in the Divide. There are five of these which you'll need to get from these destroyed iBots sitting in various locations throughout the DLC. The first is pretty close to where you actually have EDE show up and is hard to miss since you have to walk over it. The second is in the Hopeville Missile Base headquarters right down the road once you leave the bunker. The third will be once you enter the Ashton Silo Control Station, you'll go to the first floor and then into the large room, and across from there, there's going to be a door where you can only open it by a terminal, which you need a science skill of 75 to open. The fourth is going to be a little bit after the Sunstone Tower roof part. You'll need to go over near the 3rd Street Municipal Building and go into a sewer grate. Going down the left passage, you'll be able to find this iBot over here. Then the fifth will be over here behind this broken down building. This is in the same sort of area of the Divide before you go into the Cave of Abaddon. This is in the same sort of area of the Divide before you go into the Cave of Abaddon. Then, while in the Hopeville Bunker at the beginning, you can also get Rocket's Red Glare for fully upgrading the Divide's signature weapon. You can go to the Commissary Terminal to buy the three parts for this for quite a bit of money, and then slap it on the semi-unique weapon you get from the Marked Man near the Laser Detonator. You can also find these parts on Marked Men if you get lucky, but it's a very rare spawn for them to drop any of those. I've never had it happen. Then for the other big collectible achievement, we have a Warhead Hunter for detonating all of the Warheads in the Divide. Shortly into the DLC, you'll pick up the Laser Detonator and can start running through this. As there are 30 of the Warheads throughout the Divide, I made a standalone video going over all of these locations so you can pull that up during your playthrough and follow along for this one. Next up is Condemned to Repeat It for deciding the fate of the Divide Dwellers. This is a story mission that you have to go through where you launch a nuke before going into the Ashton Silo Control Center. And finally, the last achievement for the DLC, and to complete the game, is Hometown Hero for completing Lonesome Road. This is the last main story mission for the DLC, and is for confronting Ulysses and going whichever way you'd like when it comes to stopping or launching the nuke. And with that, we have all of the achievements in Fallout New Vegas. If you haven't already, be sure to check out my playlist for my other New Vegas achievement guides, or whichever one of my videos YouTube recommends.